extremely frail. Routine. Controlled flights would not occur until the advent of the internal combustion engine. See below. Santos Dumont's number 6 rounding the Eiffel Tower in the process of winning the Deutsche de Lame Earth Prize. October 1901 the first aircraft to make routine controlled flights were non-rigid airships, sometimes called blimps. The most successful early pioneering pilot office type of aircraft was the Brazilian Alberto Santos Dumont who effectively combined a balloon with an internal combustion engine. On 19 October 1901, he flew his airship number 6 over Paris from the Parc de Saint-Cloud around the Eiffel Tower and back in under 30 minutes to win the Deutsche de l'Arme Earth Prize. Santos Dumont went on to design and build several aircraft. The subsequent controversy surrounding his and others competing claims with regard to aircraft overshadowed his great contribution to the development of airships. At the same time that non-rigid airships were starting to have some success, the first successful rigid airships were also being developed. These would be far more capable than fixed-wing aircraft in terms of pure cargo carrying capacity for decades. Rigid airship design and advancement was pioneered by the German Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin. Construction of the first Zeppelin airship began in 1899 in a floating gas assembly hall on Lake Constance in the Bay of Mansell. Friedrich Schaefen. This was intended to ease the starting procedure, as the hull could easily be lined with the wind. The prototype airship LZ-1, LZ-4 Luftkiff Zeppelin had a length of 128 m, 420 feet, was driven by two 10.6 kW, 14.2 HP, Daimler engines and balanced by moving a weight between its two nacelles. Its first flight, on the 2nd of July, 1900, lasted for only 18 minutes, as LZ-1 was forced to land on the lake after few ending mechanism for the balancing weight had broken. Upon repair, the technology proved its potential in subsequent flights, bettering the 6M forward slash S speed attained by the French airship La France by 3M forward slash S, but could not yet convince possible investors. It would be several years before the Count was able to raise enough funds for another tri-dot German airship passenger service known as Delag. Deutsche Luftkiffer at AG was established in 1910. Although airships were used in both World War I and II, and continue on a limited basis to this day, their development has been largely overshadowed by heavier than aircraft. Heavier than air. 17th and 18th centuries. Italian inventor Tito Livio Buratini, invited by the Polish King Ladislaw IV to his court in Warsaw built a model aircraft with four fixed glider wings in 1647.30, described as four pairs of wings attached to an elaborate dragon. It was said to have successfully lifted a cat in 1648 but not Buratini himself. 31. He promised that only the most minor injuries would result from landing the craft. 32. His Dragon Volant is considered the most elaborate and sophisticated aeroplane to be built before the 19th century. 33. The first published paper on aviation was sketch of a machine for flying in the air by Emanuel Swedenborg published in 1716. This flying machine consisted of a light frame covered with strong canvas and provided with two large oars or wings moving on a horizontal axis, arranged so that the upstroke met with no resistance while the downstroke provided lifting power. Swedenborg knew that the machine would not fly, but suggested it as a start and was confident that the problem would be solved. He wrote, it seems. Easier to talk of such a machine than to put it into actuality, for it requires greater force and less weight than exists in a human body. The science of mechanics might perhaps suggest a means, namely, a strong spiral spring. If these advantages and requisites are observed, perhaps in time to come someone might know how better to utilize our sketch and cause some addition to be made so as to accomplish that which we can only just.
Yet there are sufficient proofs and examples from nature that such flights can take place without danger. Although when the first trials are made you may have to pay for the experience and not mind an arm or leg. Swedenborg would prove prescient in his observation that a method of powering of an aircraft was one of the critical problems to be overcome. On the 16th of May, 1793, the Spanish inventor Diego Marin Aguilera managed to cross the river Arandilla in Corona del Candy, Castile, flying 300-400 m with a flying machine. 34, 19th century. Balloon jumping replaced tower jumping, also demonstrating with typically fatal results that manpower and flapping wings were useless in achieving flight. At the same time scientific study of heavier than air flight began in earnest. In 1801, the French officer André Guillaume Resnier de Gou managed a 300-meter glide by starting from the top of the city walls of Angoulême and broke only one leg on arrival. 35. In 1837, French mathematician and brigadier general Isidore Didion stated, Aviation will be successful only if and finds an engine whose ratio with the weight of the device to be supported will be larger than current steam machines or the strength developed by humans or most of the animals. 36. Sir George Kiley and the First Model Aircraft. Sir George Kiley was first called the father of the aeroplane in 1846.37. During the last years of the previous century he had begun the first rigorous study of the physics of flight and would later design the first modern heavier than aircraft. Among his many achievements, his most important contributions to aeronautics include clarifying our ideas and laying down the principles of heavier than air flight. Reaching a scientific understanding of the principles of bird flight. Conducting scientific aerodynamic experiments demonstrating drag and streamlining movement of the center of pressure, and the increase in lift from curving the wing surface. Defining the model aeroplane configuration comprising a fixed wing, fuselage and tail assembly. Demonstrations of manned, gliding flight. Setting out the principles of power-to-weight ratio in sustaining flight. Kylie's first innovation was to study the basic science of lift by adopting the whirling arm test rig for USINE aircraft research and using simple aerodynamic models on the arm, rather than attempting to fly a model off a complete design. In 1799, he set down the concept of the modern aeroplane as a fixed-wing flying machine with separate systems for lift, propulsion, and control. 38, 39. In 1804, Kylie constructed a model glider which was the first modern heavier-than-air flying machine having the layout of a conventional model aircraft with an inclined wing towards the front and a just ably tail at the back with both tailplane and fin. A movable weight allowed adjustment of the model's center of gravity. 40. Governable parachute design of 1852 in 1809. Goaded by the farcical antics of his contemporaries, see above, he began the publication of a landmark three part treatise titled On Aerial Navigation, 1809 1810. 41. In it he wrote the first scientific statement of problem. The whole problem is confined within these limits, viz. To make a surface support a given weight by the application of power to their assistance of air. He identified the four vector forces that influence an aircraft, thrust, lift, drag and weight and distinguished stability and control in his designs. He also identified and described the importance of the cambered aerofoil, dihedral, diagonal bracing and drag reduction, and contributed to the understanding and design of ornithopters and parachutes. In 1848, he had progressed far enough to construct a glider in the form of atroplane large and safe enough to carry a child. A local boy was chosen but his name is not known. 42, 43. 
he went on to publish in 1852 the design for a full-size manned glider or governable parachute to be launched from a balloon and then to construct a version capable of launching from the top of a hill, which carried the first adult aviator across Brompton Dale in 1853. Minor inventions included the rubber-powered motor, which provided a reliable power source for research models. By 1808, he had even reinvented the wheel, devising the tension-spoked wheel in which all compression loads are carried by the rim, allowing a lightweight undercarriage. 44. Age of Steam Drawing directly from Kiley's work, Henson's 1842 design for an aerial steam carriage broke new ground. Although only a design, it was the first in history for a propeller-driven fixed-wing aircraft. 1843 Artist's impression of John Stringfellow's plane aerial flying over Thnile 1866 saw the founding of the Aeronautical Society of Great Britain and two years later the world's first aeronautical exhibition was held at the Crystal Palace, London, 45 where John Stringfellow Ways awarded a £100 prize for the steam engine with the best power to weight ratio. 46, 47, 48. In 1848, Stringfellow achieved the first powered flight using an unmanned 10 feet, 3.0 m, wingspan steam powered monoplane built in a disused lace factory in Chard, Somerset. Employing two contra-rotating propellers on the first attempt, made indoors, the machine flew 10 feet before becoming destabilized, damaging the craft. The second attempt was more successful, the machine leaving a guide wire to fly freely, achieving 30 yards of straight and level powered flight. 49, 50, 51. Francis Herbert Wynnum presented the first paper to the newly formed Aeronautical Society, later the Royal Aeronautical Society, on aerial locomotion. He advanced Kiley's work on cambered wings, making important findings. To test his ideas, from 1858 he had constructed several gliders, both manned and unmanned, and with up to five stacked wings. He realized that long, Thin wings are better than bat-like ones because they have more leading edge for their area. Today this relationship is known as the spect ratio of a wing. The latter part of the 19th century became a period of intense study, characterized by the gentleman scientists who represented most research efforts until the 20th century. Among them was the British scientist philosopher and inventor Matthew Piers Watt Bolton who studied lateral flight control and was the first to patent an aileron control system in 1868. 52, 53, 54, 55. In 1871, Wenham made the first wind tunnel using a fan, driven by a steam engine, to propel air down a 12-foot, 3.7m, tube to the model. 56. Felix Du Temple's 1874 monoplane meanwhile, the British advances had galvanized French researchers. In 1857, Felix Du Temple proposed a monoplane with a tailplane and retractable undercarriage. Developing his ideas with a model powered first by clockwork and later by steam, he eventually achieved a short hop with a full-size manned craft in 1874. It achieved liftoff under its own power after launching from a ramp glided for a short time and returned safely to the ground, making it a first successful powered glide in history. In 1865, Louis Pierre Mouillard published an influential book, The Empire of the Air, El Empire de l'Air. Jean Marie Le Brise and his flying machine, Albatros II, 1868 in 1856. Frenchman Jean-Marie Le Brise made the first flight higher than his point of departure, by having his glider El Albatros artificial pulled by a horse on a beach. He reportedly achieved a height of 100 meters, over a distance of 200 meters. Planner for a model aeroplane by Alphonse Pinord, 1871 Alphonse Pinord, a Frenchman, 
advanced their theory of wing contours and aerodynamics and constructed successful models of aeroplanes, helicopters and ornithopters. In 1871 he flew the first aerodynamically stable fixed twin aeroplane, a model monoplane he called the Planifor, at a distance of 40 m, 130 feet. P. Nord's model incorporated several off Kiley's discoveries, including the use of a tail, wing dihedral for inherent stability, and rubber power. The planifer also had longitudinal stability, being trimmed such that the tail plane was set at a smaller angle of incidence than the wings, an original and important contribution to the theory of aeronautics. 57. P. Nord's later project for an amphibian aeroplane. Although never built, incorporated are thermodern features. A tailless monoplane with a single vertical fin and twin tractor propellers, it also featured inged rear elevator and rudder surfaces, retractable undercarriage and a fully enclosed, instrumented cockpit. The aeroplane of Victor Tatin, 1879. Equally authoritative as a theorist was P. Nord's fellow countryman Victor Tatin. In 1879, he flew a model which, like P. Nord's project was a monoplane with twin tractor propellers but also had a spirit horizontal tail. It was powered by compressed air. Flown tethered to a pole, this was the first model to take off under its own power. In 1884, Alexandre Goupil published his work La Locomotion Aérienne, Aerial Locomotion, although the flying machine he later constructed failed to fly. Clement Ada Avian 3, 1897 photograph, in 1890, the French engineer Clement Ada completed the first of three steam-driven flying machines, the EO. On the 9th of October 1890 Ada made an uncontrolled hop of around 50 meters, 160 feet, Thys was the first manned airplane to take off under its own power. 58, his Avian 3 of 1897. Notable only for having twin steam engines failed to fly sad smiley 59, Ada would later claim success and was not debunked until 1910 when the French army published its report on its attempt. Maxim's flying machine Sir Hiram Maxim was an American engineer who had moved to England. He built his own whirling arm rig and wind tunnel and constructed a large machine with a wingspan of 105 feet, 32 m. A length of 145 feet, 44 m, four and aft horizontal surfaces and a crew of three. Twin propellers were powered by two lightweight compound steam engines each delivering 180 hp, 130 kilowatts. The overall weight was 8,000 pounds, 3,600 kilograms. It was intended as a test rig to investigate aerodynamic lift. Lacking flight controls it ran in rails, with a second set of rails above the wheels to restrain it. Completed in 1894, on its third run it broke from the rail, became airborne for about 200 yards at 2 to 3 feet of altitude, 60, and was badly damaged upon falling back to the ground. It was subsequently repaired, but Maxim abandoned I's experiments shortly afterwards. 61 learning to glide, Otto Lilienthal and the first human flights. The Bayat Masia glider, restored and on display in the Musée de L'Air around the last decade of the 19th century, a number of key figures were refining and defining the modern aeroplane. Lacking a shootable engine, aircraft work focused on stability and controlling gliding flight. In 1879, Byatt constructed a bird-like glider with the help of Massia and flew in it briefly. It is preserved in the Musée de l'Air, France, and is claimed to be the earliest man-carrying flying machine still in existence. The Englishman Horatio Phillips made key contributions to aerodynamics. He conducted extensive wind tunnel research in refoil sections, proving the principles of aerodynamic lift foreseen by Kylie and Wenham. His findings underpin all modern aerofoil design. Between 1883 and 1886, the American John Joseph Montgomery developed a series of three manned gliders, 
before conducting his own independent investigations into aerodynamics and circulation of lift. Otto Lilienthal, the 29th of May 1895, Otto Lilienthal became known as the Glider King or Flying Man of Germany. He duplicated Wenham's work and Great Lie expanded on it in 1884, publishing his research in 1889 as bird flight as the basis of aviation. Der Vogelflug als Grundlage der Fliegerkunst, which is